buenas tardes. Thank you very much for allowing the exception. I know that COPS Metro and all of the good work that you do, you have a standardized program. I am very grateful for the opportunity. Um, our family uh, will celebrating, uh, which would have been the second uh, birthday of an infant grandson, and we have a special mass at five. So I wanted to come and give just a few thoughts about the power of a living wage. I had an unbelievable opportunity this past year to travel the state. And although we came from different parts of the state, from the Rio Grande Valley to the High Plains, from the Chinati Mountains at El Paso to the Piney Woods of East Texas, there was one outcry every single place I lived, I went to visit. And it was from the families who said, how can we continue as a state when our minimum wage is only $7.25. So I want to thank you for pushing on on this agenda. It is not just important for San Antonio and for Bear County, but I heard it firsthand. When a salary of a minimum wage puts a family in poverty, there is no way that they can live a life of dignity. It is so very difficult. Para mí era un honor visitar a todos partes de Texas y cada, cada lugar me pidieron cómo podemos tener un salario de siete dólares y veinticinco centavos, señora, señora Letty, me dijeron. Y yo, yo sé que el trabajo que vamos a hacer ahora es no lo más importante para San Antonio y el condado de Bear, pero es de todo el estado. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you to all of you in your fight. I will join you in your effort to raise a wage so that it is just for our family. Thank you, Senator. So to get a better understanding of the issues, we need to learn more about them. We have asked a team of COPS Metro leaders to prepare short presentations on the issues of wages, payday lending, and the city budget. Good afternoon. I'm Annie Hubbard from Holy Redeemer Catholic Church. Yeah. Earlier, you heard it mentioned the unemployment rate of 4.7% in San Antonio. This is one of the lowest unemployment rates since the recession began. Economists are very excited because anything less than 5% is considered near full employment. It means that our society is working. But if nearly everyone is working, why are we here today? Mm -hmm. We are here today because the unemployment rate does not reflect a true picture of this economy in San Antonio. Let me try to paint you a picture. When my kids were young, I used to send them to clean their rooms. And they would come back when they were finished and they would be very excited. And they'll say, mommy, come look. And I would go and look. And when I first looked in the room, everything looked neat, everything looked clean. But then I would look under the bed. <laughs> Or I would look in the closets. I can tell you understand. That's what we have been doing for the past few months. We have been looking under the bed. We have been looking in closets. And what do you think we have found? We have found that 20% of people in San Antonio live below the poverty level. And we have found something else that may surprise you. How many people have children? We have found that one in three children live below, under age five, 
live below the poverty level. Many of them go to bed hungry. Even worse, we have found that in households headed by women, one half of children live below the poverty level. More importantly, we have found that people work hard in San Antonio. <laughs> but many of them still cannot make ends meet, sometimes working more than one job. I asked you earlier, why are we here? That is why we are here. We are here because many people are working very hard but they still cannot make ends meet. We're here because wages in San Antonio have not kept up with the cost of living in San Antonio. hicimos nuestra junta cívica acerca de los salarios bajos y me di cuenta que muchas de nuestras familias estaban pasando por una situación difícil al igual que la mía de mi experiencia personal les puedo platicar que he estado trabajando 15 años en mi trabajo donde por los últimos cinco años mi salario ha sido aumentado muy mínimamente y provocando esto una, situa una situación, una crisis económica en nuestras familias, porque los sueldos no han aumentado, pero el, los, los, uh, uh, el aumento de los precios básicos, como son la luz, el teléfono, el agua, la comida, especialmente la comida, han aumentado considerablemente. Esto ha provocado una crisis económica en muchas de nuestras familias. A continuación veremos una gráfica que nos muestra a una familia que gana 8.50 por hora, una familia integrada por cuatro personas. En esta gráfica podemos ver que los ingresos totales mensuales son de 1.360. Podemos ver que los gastos que son muy básicos, la renta, el agua, teléfono, comida, gasolina, podemos ver que el total de lo que esta familia gana 1.360 al mes pero sus gastos son de 2.125 ¿cómo podemos hermanos? Los, las personas que ganamos 8.50 a la hora poder proveer las necesidades básicas para nuestras familias es por eso que estamos esta noche aquí imaginemos que puede hacer una familia que está ganando 7.25 la hora es por eso que estamos aquí, hermanos, para hacer algo. Y a continuación, vamos a ver por qué nuestras familias están ganando estos sueldos y a qué recursos tienen que recurrir. Muchas de nuestras familias tienen que recurrir a pedir ayuda económica, como son los alimentos, los alimentos y otras necesidades, como son los préstamos. A continuación, escucharemos esta historia. Gracias. Hernandez from Sagrado Corazón Church, and I'm here to talk about the experience that I've had, that we have uh, through our church with Sagrado Corazón. And a lot of our families are going through a lot, especially through the situation, financial situation that's very hard. I've worked for 15 years, and I've always gained only the the minimum. And for these last or past five years, of uh, the service, the basic service and the food has been uh, increased, but our wages are still the same. And this has uh, caused a serious financial crisis in a lot of our families uh, that they're only at the minimum wage. This is how it shows on uh, the basic, uh, the monthly, when we are only having 
uh, to be, get paid $8.50 an hour. It's not enough. That is why a lot of families go through all these payday loans or those financial uh, agencies where they loan money because it's not, it's not enough for a family. And next, they're going to present another story. The budget that you just looked at is based on $8.50 an hour. And you can see that they did not have enough money to pay their bills. Minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. The wage for the lowest paid Bear County and San Antonio public worker is $11.47. This may seem like a lot if you're making $7.25 or $8.50, but it is still below the poverty level. It is still below food stamp eligibility. So what is a living wage? The Center for Public Policy Priorities estimate that a non-farm family of four need a wage of $19.96 an hour to be totally self-reliant and not have to, to depend on food stamps, not have to go to the food bank, and not to re have to receive any other subsidies just to pay their bills. Mi nombre es Pedro Bueno, pertenezco a la Iglesia del Sagrado Corazón. Hay aproximadamente 3,400 locales de préstamos de empeño de título de autos en Texas. Hay más de este tipo de negocios que McDonald's y Whataburger juntos. Los llamados Payday Loan o Tyro Loan son usados primordialmente para pagar la renta, utilidades y otro tipo de necesidades. Las ganancias de estas compañías es la dificultad de pagar todo el préstamo en dos semanas o en un mes, o de lo contrario es pagar altos intereses. Los intereses llegan a ser de 600% del préstamo original o más. Por ejemplo, un préstamo de 500 dólares, uno termina pagando 1,500 dólares. Los préstamos son asegurados por una cuenta bancaria o el título de un auto. La realidad es que mucha gente, por los altos intereses, usualmente sus autos, sus autos no pueden pagar a tiempo sus préstamos. Yo fui una víctima de estas agencias. Yo pedí un préstamo de 500 dólares a cambio del título de mi troca. En el transcurso de nueve meses, tuve que pagar 1,500 dólares para que me regresaran mi título de mi troca. ¿Por qué tomé la decisión de ir a esta agencia? Porque no completo para hacer mis pagos básicos, mucho menos para un seguro médico. Por eso, hermanos, yo les pido que nos unamos para poder triunfar en estos dos tipos de injusticias, que son los salarios justos y estas agencias depredadoras. Estas agencias las llamadas compañías Pay the Loan tienen ganancias por más de 2.4 billones de dólares en cargos el año pasado. Por eso, hermanos, les invito a que nos unamos y todos juntos podemos salir victoriosos ante estas dos grandes injusticias. Gracias. And there are approximately 3,400 agencies of payday loans uh, where you can go in and, and um, get a loan uh, from your car title. And there is more of these businesses in San Antonio than there is McDonald's or Whataburger altogether. 
uh, those agencies called payday loans are used uh, so we can pay our rent, our utilities, and some other basic needs. Now, um, these uh, agencies, these payday loan agencies, have a profit of more than $2.4 billion um, since last year. And I just want to emphasize that I was one of a victim of these uh, payday loans where I had to, um, you know, loan my title. And this was a, a loan of $500. And at the end, I had to pay $1,500 back. This was a 600% of uh, interest rate in my case. So this is why I'm here today. Good afternoon, my name is Robert Cruz, and I'm with St. Leo the Great Catholic Church. Yay. The first graph I'm going to show you on budget, it's a city budget that I'm sure that all of y'all have seen before. These two um, columns, right, but these two parts of the pie here is the restricted funds and capital programs. Now these are long-term decision-making projects that are restricted or defined. The general fund, that's the one that the city council votes on a yearly basis on how to spend the money. Now, what are the sources of the general fund? The major sources are property tax, sales tax, energy, and other resources. Last year was $201 million on other resources. Now, what are the uses, the main uses of fire, police and fire, public works, parks and recreation, and other. <coughs> So the question for me in looking at these is how do we pay for some of the needs in our community? Some of the issues that we confront in our community, where do we get the money from? It seems that, and, I'm, and I've worked with you all on many occasions, we always have to fight for money for our communities on the projects that are needed there. Every year the budget office tells us there is no money. The city council is also told that there is no money, creates fear, it creates an artificial crisis within the city council and also in the community if it's published by the newspaper. I draw your attention to this other graph that projects our deficit. Now this is 200 and, uh, I mean 2009. Now in all fairness to the budget office, this is when we had our recession. And I can see that deficit, it's a downward trend. But then it continues, it continues, it continues on the five year pro projection. As I looked at the other, at 2010, you see a spike because the economy recovers somewhat. But notice the, the big drop in the deficit here. And they projected more deficit and more deficit. If we look at 12, it's the same thing. This is a balance line, the balance budget line. So again, you see the deficit, a deficit, a deficit. So that it's always a downward trend. There's no money, they tell us. There is no money. And I agree with the city budget office. We need to be cautious, and it's good planning in, in, in planning a budget. But I think they're being overcautious. Okay, I think they're being overcautious. And, and that process is ingrained in the budget process every year. That there's that deficit, that there's not enough money. Let's look at the chart on sales taxes just to give you an example. This is a projection. This is actual sales. <laughs> Every year, look at the gap, 40 million above what they project. They underestimated, but the revenue is up there. So where does that money go? Is it in a reserve fund? Where, where does it go? That tells me that we operate in a budget that's built on fear. There's no money. There's no money. I think the city manager spends money on projects that she likes. Yeah. I would like to, if you remember the newspaper yesterday's newspaper? Yes. yes. The final four returning to San Antonio. Page 12, 
page 12 of the newspaper, they found next to her picture, and I circled it, they found $43 million to upgrade the Alamo Dome to accommodate the, and there's no money. <laughs> We know that the city is courting a professional football team, right? Yes. Yes. That's right. And they've committed to upgrading the Alamo Dome with executive suites. Right. Money. Yes. There's no money. <laughs> and I guarantee you that if the professional football team does locate a San Antonio in two or three years, they're going to want a new stadium. Yes. And they'll get it. Yes. There's no money. <laughs> Every year we hear this. Every year the budget process is the same. Cuts need to be made. And where are these cuts? Senior centers, adult literacy program, housing, jobs. They tell us there's no money. But we know that there is. Right? right. Hello, I'm Carmen Aguilar from St. Timothy Cops Metro. Woo! I have been employed with Project Quest for 21 years. And I have seen many applicants that have very hard stories to listen to. I have met with thousands of them who are employed but earning very little, just a little above the minimum wage. It is not unusual for the applicant or the spouse to be working two or three part-time jobs. I have met single parents and other applicants who are in a desperate struggle to stay above water. For example, having to borrow money and paying high interest rates to be able to pay their monthly bills. Others are unemployed, have to move in with family members because they're in a long list of waiting for housing. I have seen many applicants who pawn their values and worse, even sell their plasma to make ends meet. That is not the way to make ends meet. Thank you. I am the president of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul here in the Archdiocese of San Antonio and a leader at Resurrection of the Lord Parish. I come to speak here not for myself, but for the 250,000 people we serve in the Archdiocese every year. They cry out for help and for hope. We estimate that 30% of those people use the predatory lending process to survive. Unacceptable. Secondly, we're finding that as we are doubling and tripling the number of people that come to see us, that mostly the people who go to these institutions are what we call the middle income folks. 
There ain't no such thing as we see it of middle income anymore. And it is, it is strictly survival. They are not familiar with the, all the other governmental assistance, so they're desperate. And that flashing sign on the next block called payday lending just draws them in, and then they come to us. And literally, I have sat with people who are so ashamed, crying, desperate, and all I can do is hold them, hug them, and cry with them. That's not San Antonio. It should never be San Antonio. So let us deal with this issue. Let us return the human dignity. Let's get away with the loss of hope, the depression, the homelessness that this causes, and let's make what I consider San Antonio's the greatness of a city is not the glitz and the glory, the Alamo domes, football teams, but how we treat and care for the least of our society, the most of poverty, and those who are marginalized. If we do that, we'll be free. On behalf of those folks we serve, thank you and God bless you. My name is Vera Adame, and I'm a member of St. Alfonso's Church. I want to tell you about my daughter. She's 53 and works two jobs. In fact, she's not even able to be here today because she's working. She works 40 hours a week as a cashier at Palo Alto College, where she makes $8.50 an hour. She has no benefits no sick leave, and no vacation. On the weekends, she works at Sam's. The hours vary there, but they, and they pay her $11 an hour, no benefits either. She needs two jobs to pay all her bills, car, gas, food, rent, and all the essentials. She has struggled for many years to make ends meet and to raise her son to put him through school and job training. I retired from 27 years of civil service and I had a good wages, benefits, and paid vacation. So it angers me that my daughter who works or a public community college is stressed and tired all the time from working so hard. I want something better for her. Thank you. should pay a living wage. Yeah. 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 Because of our faith traditions, we do not want to be responsible for holding people in poverty through low public wages. We want to work with the county to set an example and then with the city, community college boards, school boards, hospital districts, and any other jobs our tax dollars touch to lead the way in Texas for higher wages. We're advocating a three-part strategy which is located on the back of your agenda. Over the next three years, we will work to increase the living wage from 100% of the federal poverty level, which is the current $11.40 per hour wage, 
to 130% of the federal poverty level, or $14.91 an hour, to the lowest paid workers in the city and county, as well as other public sector employees. You can see the step-by-step -step increases on the slide here and on your agenda. Second, we want to set a wage floor for outsourced or subcontracted service jobs at least on par with the current wage floor for direct employees. Janitorial, cafeteria, maintenance, landscaping, and security jobs are just some of the positions that the city and county outsource, often turning good public sector jobs into minimum wage jobs with no benefits. Raise your hand if you know someone who works in one of these jobs. Yep, it looks like most of us know someone with one of these jobs. Third, require that all businesses applying for tax incentives of any kind, whether it's called an abatement, a grant, or any other name, abide by the current economic development guidelines regarding wage floors. We want the tax incentives loophole closed, regardless of what the incentive is called. Earlier, we heard Mr. Bueno's story about payday lending. To combat the issue of predatory lending, let me share a story of success from one of our sister organizations in El Paso, APISO. APISO leaders passed ordinances with the city and the county to regulate the interest charged by payday loan companies. Local churches also pooled resources together to become the guarantor of loans, and leaders worked with a local credit union to provide loans at low interest rates. Imagine if we did something like that here in San Antonio. The San Antonio City Council has already passed an ordinance to begin regulating payday loan companies. We'd like to find allies, work with the leaders of our faith communities and elected officials to pass an ordinance to regulate the companies in Bear County as well, and to explore alternatives to access low interest loans. We'll be holding a strategy meeting this Thursday, November 20th at 7 p.m. at the COPS Metro office to plan research actions and house meetings on this issue. We will now hear from our elected officials. I'm Sister Gabriella Lowe, the Holy Spirit sister. I've been with Cops and Metro Alliance. Now that our now that our strategy has been explained, we'd like to give our guests an opportunity to respond. And we'll start with our Bear County officials. Commissioner Elizondo, will you please come up? was very helpful in getting the COPS Metro uh, um, proposal on the County Commissioner's Court agenda for this Tuesday morning, November 18th. <laughs> to address this very issue of living wages. Thank you, Commissioner. Welcome. Commissioner 
really long ago. As you see, we believe the county has an important role to play in raising wages in this community through direct employees and those employed through contracts with the county. Bear County should lead the way and set an example for other public entities and private sector employees that living wages make good policy and good business sense. Now I'm going to ask you three questions. And I'll ask the three questions and then you can answer the three together, okay? Do you agree that the county has a role to play in raising wages? Two, do you support the three-point strategy laid out there? And three, what steps will you take to begin to implement the stra that, this strategy in our county, Bear County? Of course the county uh, wants to lead the way just like we did with the estab establishment of the living wage in, in San Antonio and Bear County. The city followed us and I'm glad they did. But we went from uh, eight dollars an hour, eight dollars and fifty cents, uh, or eight thirty-three, I recall, mm -hmm. to now the present eleven forty-seven. And we'll be happy to lead the way uh, moving on from there. We'll work with you for with the strategy. What, what plans do I have or what plans do we have? Well, we've got it on Tuesday's agenda, so we're already moving on it. Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, the, the part uh, of the, you know, there's parts of this proposal yes. that are difficult because we don't want to wind up in a situation where uh, we pay employees fairly with one hand and take away, uh, have to raise their taxes or something on the other side. And this is not fear. The county does not have the same resources the city does. We don't get the CPS 15%. We don't get the sales tax, so everything that we pay, 85% of what we do is on property taxes. So we have to protect the homeowner, and so that's where the balance is. But we will get to that $11, uh, dollar, uh, we are at $11, we will get to that $13 figure as soon as we can, and uh, after that, wait a minute, well, we'll move along, because I don't like to make promises that I can't keep. Well, uh, you know, I've, I've been elected eight times as county commissioner because I never promised anything that I couldn't keep. But I will work for it. I will work for it. We will work for that. And then on the requirements, close the loophole. Yes. yes. We want to do that. Uh, the one that's going to be a little tricky is that uh, in contract labor, uh, on the privatized thing. We will work for it because I did that with the unions. I have a, uh, what is called the prevailing wage that I passed years ago in Bear County and just like we did that, we're going to try to do it with our contracts. Well, let's be clear now. You do support the three-point strategy? Yes. Okay. <laughs>
I brought was that if you don't have three votes of commissioners court, you're dead in the water. That's right. And so Paul was out there struggling with just two votes. He asked me to come. I took a swing seat in precinct four away from the Republicans and brought it to the people who are more labor friendly. And I'm proud to say that we passed the prevailing wage under under this uh, this majority and a whole lot of other things. Important things that critically affect or inflict your community, all of our community, with incarceral mania, the over incarceration of people that ends up with their families yeah, struggling when they're trying to figure out yeah. where is the daddy, where is uh, the wage earner, and that, that's a big part of it. But I would support anything we can to lift up our wages. I think it's been uh, research shows that we're below what, where we should be. And when I look at the central city areas that I've seen all my life, I see a uh, great opportunity for improvement. Thank you. And you agree that the county has a role to play in this? We do. We're the deep rudder of local governance. And let me tell you why. We have four-year terms. We have no term, term limitation. Everybody's making 110 grand, and the county judge 125,000 a year, yes. not just forty dollars of business at the city, yes. which is uh, disgraceful. Yes. Uh, the uh, because nobody can work for free unless you're rich or retired, and that's not very many. But the fact of the matter is, we have the ability to go to Austin and get Austin's attention for doing some of the things they do to erode our property tax base. That's critical to our well-being. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all. We are also interested in engaging the city of San Antonio in this strategy. And we have with us the only declared candidate for mayor, State Representative Mike Virier. Will you please come forward? First of all, we know you understand the need for higher wages because you've been a strong ally in the legislature working with COPS Metro and Project Quest to fund job training strategies that bring people out of poverty. We thank you for that. If elected mayor, you will have the opportunity to make an even larger impact in the lives of our families by supporting living wages both for city employees and those who work for city contracts. So we have the same questions for you. Do you agree that the city of San Antonio has a role to play in raising wages? We have a big role to play, a leadership role to play. Yes. Thank you. If, if elected, will you support the three-point strategy laid out by our leaders? Sister Gabriella, when I am elected, I will be your partner in, that, in making this happen for the city of San Antonio. What steps will you take to begin to implement this strategy in the city? I will bring our city manager, our finance director to the table with your leadership. We will study the details. We will figure out how to make this happen. It will be, I'm sure, not easy, but I believe it is doable. I believe it is. Talk out to the people. I, I, I was educated by that. So. And I'm going to count on her to be by my side when I'm sitting with our city manager on the other side. But we're, we're, we're going to figure this out. This, this is going to be a challenge 
there are a lot of pressing demands for our city budget dollars. Ultimately, this is about right versus wrong. We want, I want, I want working for the city to be something that our city employees, they come to work feeling proud of their work. Their public service is, is a noble role to play in serving their fellow neighbors. We need to retreat, we need to treat them with the respect and dignity they deserve, and that means paying them a living wage. I will work with you. I'm making that happen. the issues, told your stories, agreed to a strategy, and heard from elected officials, let's talk about what we need to do next. In order to really make higher wages, responsible lending, and greater services to our communities a reality, we need to build power. Right now, hundreds of us have been teaching and learning about these issues, but to make an impact, we're going to need to grow. We're going to need to keep building a base.